we'll come back to part two of the Mori tour. So we've textured the actual initial anvil and we've applied this to the color channels. What we need to do now is we have some occluded areas here where the texture hasn't actually been laid down properly. So what we need to do is fix this by using the paint through tool again and fix the edges. So you can see the occluded passive from which we paste this down. So if we bring up our actual paint through option, we can either bring it through the toolbar or we can press the U on the actual hotkey list. So if we look at this, we can see how the texture is actually laid down on the model and how it appears in the paint through texture we've sampled. So we need to just line this up and we need a nice soft brush for this one so we can go into the presets and click on the super brush. We can just gently paint through this. Now the pressure sensitivity of a Wacom if you're using it is actually applied to more as well so we can gently apply this soft or as hard as we please. I'm just gently playing this in and just retexturing and just fixing the edges which we have over here and making this look a little bit more natural. Very quick, very easy. We just paint this down and clear the paint buffer. We can just move this around because we fix the edge there. Now what we need to do is do the same for the rest of the actual edges within this actual model. As you can see, the occluded passes are coming down through there. So when we did a top-down paste and actually stamped this texture down, we were missing what was underneath the top edge of the anvil. So we do the same process again. Get the paint through tool up again, and use the hotkey list of view or on the actual viewer itself. You can paint this down really softly. There we go. Much better. Now, once we've actually painted this down without actually baking it, what we can do is move the actual initial paint stroke in the buffer and manipulate it. What we can do with this one is actually use the other tools within the Mori tool palette. We have the grid warping tool here. What we can do with this is actually draw this down. As we click on it, we can see the actual user command keys up here on the HUD. So we draw this down using the control key and we actually manipulate the paint stroke within the actual buffer without baking it down. Now we can actually increase the number of divisions within the actual grid work tool by using the merit keys, the up and down keys. Up to go increase divisions and down to decrease divisions. If we just turn the edge masking tool on and we actually apply this and warp the actual paint stroke, it won't appear on the edges and it won't bleed out. So that's just G on the keyboard. Or you can access it to the projection menu. What we can do this one is actually redraw our paint stroke and our actual redraw grid warper tool with actually damaging our paint stroke and we can do this by using the actual redraw tab so we just hold the control key down and redraw it as you can see if we do this half above our actual paint stroke we can cut our paint stroke we laid down we can do a drag select and move this up and down so have a go playing around with this just get a feel for how it works just redraw our tab and we're just manipulating it so it fits around the edges and the paint strokes don't look awkward. So we'll bake this down, back to the key, let's just empty the buffer real quickly. This is a nice job actually fixing the edges that we have here. And there's quite a few other tools we can use now. So once you've fixed most of the edges here, what we can do is explore the other tools. So we just bring back our actual paint through tab which is going to be fixing our top edge. So we angle this in to where we want it. What we can do again is just paint this in, just around the edges, turn the edge masking on so none of it bleeds around the edges again by pressing G on the hotkey list. So you see we just fixed the edge there, it looks more natural now, it looks like it fits the actual angle properly. Bring this in. Now what we can do is use the actual different tools in here. So we're just going to be using the pin stroke now. Now in some cases the actual grid warp tool isn't going to be required for this one because you want a much more natural fit on the actual model itself and having a uniform geometric like a square isn't going to work for you. So what you can do is use the pin tool to draw yourself your own warper. So we can lay the actual pins down by using the actual HUD command, so that's control and drop them down wherever we please. And once we pick these tools up we can actually drag them around and drag the paint stroke. What we can do is change the weight of these pins by using the up and down arrows on the numeric keypad. We can press up to increase the weight of each pin, or we can press the down to decrease the weight of each pin and the strength of it. What we also have is this slurp tool. This is exactly what says in the tin. You can actually slurp the actual paint stroke around. We can pick it up and just drag and just smudge as much as we want with the paint. 
bake this down. Let's do that. Let's actually clear the buffer. Let's see what we've done here. So you can see with the edge masking too long, we've actually done a nice job at fixing the edges. So what we need to do now is for you to go through and check the edges we've got here. Now these are okay, but you can actually manipulate them and change them a bit more just to make them match and look a bit more natural. We've got a couple of edges here which I haven't actually painted on, which were actually occluded because these are actually inside the actual anvil hole, which you see on the top of it. So we just paint these down, bake them in, clear our paint buffer, and go back into the scene. which painted the occluded areas which we have here. Which didn't go through because of the actual edge stroke. What we can do here is go and fix the rest of the edges and once you've done this we can start painting in the other channels of the actual model itself. So the next step in this process is actually fixing the bottom edge of this one. We've got a, a light colour here with the texture comes through and a dark colour which doesn't really fit properly. So what we can do is use another tool, which is the cloning one. As you can see with every tool in Mario we also have the actual details on the HUD of how to use the tool. So we're just going to be cloning. So we're pressing Control down for a sample area. And we're just going to be cloning from the actual correct color, which is a light one, and just painting up this one. We're just going to resample again by hitting the Control key and the click on the mouse. Just really paint this area black, make it look a bit more natural. There we go. Just bake this in, clear our buffer. Go back into a 3D view and we fix this one really nicely. Just have a look for any more passes that we need. We fixed them already. What we can do with our actual cloning tool again is use the actual image manager. And if we just go to our channel, we've just fixed our colours. What we we'll do is go into dirt mask, which is essentially an alpha mask of where the actual dirt shows through. So white won't be shown through and black will be. So what we need to do is do a black and white mask this one. So we're going to be using a black and white image. We're just going to be using the image that we brought in. I'm just going to drag and drop this onto the actual viewer again. What we can do is resize this one. Now with this actual talk speed browser image, we're just going to use the black areas to paint on the actual sides of the actual anvil which we have. So we're just going to resize this to the side. And what we need, because it's black and white, is just the corner of this one. I'm just going to resample this. And we're just going to press the control key on the actual image itself and sample where we need it. So we're going to pick the flag and the Talk Brothers. So sample straight off the image and paint it directly onto the anvil. So we've got Talk Brothers with the speed flag. There you go, really nice. And I'm just going to move this up a little bit so we get more of the flag and less of the wording. So you can see with the actual buffer on, we protect our edges. So we press G on the hotkey list or we can use the projection menu. So we're just going to move our anvil down by holding down the actual Alt and the middle mouse button. I'm just going to move the paint stroke up and uh, we're just going to bake that down and get rid of our actual sample now. So we've baked it and the image is still in our actual paint buffer. So we can move this round, hit numeric key number 5, just flip to the side of the anvil to get a really nice side on. Bake it in again by pressing the B button and just empty your paint buffer. As you can see we've got the flag from the actual sample on both sides of our anvil now. So we've got ourselves a black and white alpha mask. What we can also do is actually really apply a bit more dirt to this one. That brush is a little bit too big, so we resize it. We can do this with the actual plus and minus keys on the actual keyboard to do it really quickly. Or we can go into the brush editor and properties bin to get a bit more control of what we have. So we need to paint black onto this one. As you can see right now we're painting white. We can go into our colors tab, sample black again, and just paint this actual hard brush directly onto our anvil, just bring up the actual edge masking again. Now it's always advisable to paint with edge masking on so we don't get any bleeding edges everywhere. So I'm just going to use this paint stroke in my buffer and just press B to bake this on again really quickly. So we just cover the areas that we need. Now it's important to actually look at the object that we're using here as an anvil. So the top edge of this will be used more for actually metal work and the sides won't be. So this area here will be quite used and quite dirty. Just go ahead and just bake in these different passes on that really onto the actual dirt mask layer. So just empty our bin. And we're going to now just paint a bit more onto the top area to show where the dirt would be, just on these corners and edges. 
So we're just painting a story of how the object was actually being used. So just give it a bit more of a smudge. Just really go at it. Just paint some more areas in. This is where the dirt is being used, so it's more concentrated on these areas. Okay. So once you can lay down a bit more of the dirt on this one, you can actually see exactly what this fits. So you can take a bit more time over this and do a bit more uh, dirt work. You can use any other brushes that we have over here. So we're going to pick uh, a few more of these different hollow brushes and organic brushes, and we can actually load them into our um, personal tab on our shelf. What we can also do is take some of the preset brushes and actually modify them so we can actually create our own brushes from the preset standards. So what we can do is if we pick ourselves a normal brush, you can see from our own one here, we've actually created one ourselves. So I'm just going to pick a standard brush from here. And just actually increase the different parameters of this one. Just get a brush that we tested on here. Maybe a different brush this one. So we get a standard soft edge brush. I'm just going to change into some spots. So we're going to rotate the size down, we're going to change the noise, and we're going to change the spacing of this one. So we get a few different spots on this one, it's like a speckled color. So what we can do with this one, so we actually modify this, is we click the add or the plus icon, and we actually saved ourselves a brush. We created a new one, and we can rename this one as well. So we can call this My Brush. Yeah, so we've created ourselves a brand new brush that we actually paint with. Let's go ahead and test this. Just leaving the edge masking on. There we go. We create ourselves a spotty brush. So we can get rid of this and turn it off. So you can go ahead and actually change and modify brush to get a better effect. What we can do is in our personal one, we actually copy this to our actual My Menu shelf. So we're just going to rename this as number seven. And what we can do with actual Mari's have ourselves a pie tool. And we can add different brush to this by simply giving on the plus and minuses. So if we click on F9 on the keyboard, it brings up our Pi Tool option. That's why we renamed our actual pies in the actual shelf 1 through 7. So we're going to save different brushes that we use most commonly, save different textures, save different colors, and work really, really quickly without having to go to the menus. So what you can do now is use the Pi Tool, modify your own brushes, and create a really, really good dirt map to actually use on the actual dirt mask itself. So we get a really nice clean edge and think about where the dirt should lie. Once you've done this, we can continue to the next part. So you can use the existing image manager brushes as well and really create something really nice.